Good afternoon and welcome to Emory University's Goizueta Business School. Today we are going to be talking about life in Atlanta. I'm Nicole Hippas, Director of Program Marketing here at Goizueta, and I'm joined today by Lori Klomberg from our Career uh, Center, as well as two of our current full-time MBA students, Caleb and Nicola. I'll have them introduce themselves shortly, but first I'm going to do a little bit of housekeeping. Um, this web chat is being recorded in its entirety, so if you miss anything along the way or have to jump off early, no worries. We will send you an email with the entire video of the web chat, as well as any slides that we show here today, and you'll get that in your inbox in about a week. Uh, I also want to mention that we want this web chat to be as interactive as possible, so if you have any questions at any time, please shoot them over to us. We'll do our best to answer them on air. We also have a team of folks behind the scenes that will help answer your questions as well. Uh, thank you to all of you who registered and submitted questions when you registered. We will kick off with those. But first, Lori, if you won't mind uh, starting off your, the introductions. Sure. Uh, I'm Lori Klomberg. I'm the Senior Director of Employer Relations at the MBA Career Management Center. Um, I have been here for about five and a half years, so um, love my job, love what I do, love getting to work with the students as well. So um, welcome, and uh, we hope you we choose to, to come here. Hey everyone, I'm Caleb. I'm a second year student at the two year MBA program. I will be graduating in uh, less than two weeks now. Mm -hmm. um, I moved here from India just for business school and I was working in India in Delhi. Uh, after business school, I'll be going to work out on the West Coast in San Francisco for Amazon and that's kind of where I s intern in the summer as well. Uh, happy to talk about any questions that you have about Atlanta and the fun things to do here. Uh, my name is Nicola Braginski. I'm in the one-year MBA program, and I will be graduating with Caleb in just a couple of weeks, which is crazy. Um, from Boston originally, and moved down here to come to school, um, and will be staying in Atlanta actually after I graduate, joining Deloitte Consulting. All right. Thank you, everyone, for being here today. So the first question we're going to start off with uh, Nicola and Caleb. As two people who are not from Atlanta originally, and um, from different parts of the world. Um, some folks who uh, haven't been spent time here before may have some preconceived notions mm -hmm. about what life in Atlanta might be like. It's a southern city, um, <clears throat> and, but it is still quite globally diverse. Uh, I'd love to hear from you guys. What preconceived notions did you have about Atlanta and how have they changed since you've lived here? So I actually went to Emory undergrad as well. Um, they call us double eagles. Um, and I'm from Boston, as I mentioned earlier, so I think coming from the north to the south was definitely a very big change. And it's kind of the typical preconceived idea of like, oh, it's the south, you have you know southern bells and all this kind of southern country music and everything. And <laughs> I think you know I was okay with it, but I, w I felt like I wasn't prepared for it. And I came for undergrad and didn't see that at all. It was a great kind of cosmopolitan mix of people here in Atlanta. And then I moved back up to Boston to work for a few years before coming back for my MBA. And I think it's only become more mixed and kind of more diverse after I moved back here. So for me, it was kind of a confirmation of, hey, you know, you're, you're a northern girl and you can be that northern girl here in the south. Um, it's, not, it's not quite as rigid as I kind of felt before I came to school here. I agree. And it's not all like y'all and fried chicken and all. It's very, <laughs> it's very, it's very cosmopolitan. And, and there are some things that I really do appreciate as, as, uh, as I've traveled across the U.S. For example, like when I go to the grocery store, I, I end up having a full-blown conversation with the ch lady at the checkout counter. Oh, you got a new ha haircut. That's, that looks really nice on you. So <laughs> it's, it's very warm that way. Mm -hmm. That's fun. Laura, you've been here for five years. You were originally from Houston. I'd love to get your take on it as someone who comes from a whole other region of the U.S. Yeah, so I thought that Houston was the South until I moved to the actual <laughs> South. Um, no, but it's uh, actually it wasn't a hard transition for me at all. Um, I think Atlanta has much better weather than Houston does, so um, I'm very happy with that. Um, but no, it's people are still incredibly warm, like you mentioned, friendly, um, and I was used to that. So I think it would be hard for me to transition to some place that wasn't that way, just because mm -hmm. that's what I've always had. Um, but yeah, I have made Atlanta my home. My husband and I have no intention of, of moving. Not that, you know, 
never say never, but um, we really love it. And um, we've just found that even though it's a very large city, there are definitely ways to get tapped into your community. And I think we can talk about that a little bit more later. So if staying in Atlanta is something that you do want to do upon graduation, I think that there are lots of ways to make it feel not as big of a city as it is. Or if you want to feel like it's a really big city, you live in Midtown and it does feel that way. So yeah. I think it has the best of both worlds. That's great advice. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about neighborhoods in a second. But first, I just want to get uh, kind of the feedback from you guys comparing the places you've lived before and living in Atlanta. So I could definitely add on to what Lori just said. Boston is a very small city. Um, and I, I grew up in kind of San Francisco and Boston, a little mixed bag of both. I think coming to Atlanta at first, it was a little intimidating because it is so much bigger. Um, but as Lori said, it almost makes for kind of an exciting experience because you're in Boston and you kind of have your one or two types of communities. Whereas you come to Atlanta and it's like you could be in a bunch of different neighborhoods, which we'll talk about in a second. But um, you, can, you can just get a different culture everywhere you are. And I think that was new for me. Um, it isn't a walkable city, so I did have to get a car and kind of learn how to drive again after not driving for a, a lot of years while I was in college. Um, but you get used to that and, you know, that wasn't a problem for me at all. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think it's just, it's the experience that you want, which is a little different than smaller cities. Well, I've only lived in the US in two cities. One is San Francisco and one is uh, Atlanta. And I agree with what Nicola said. You can't really walk around anywhere. So I, uh, in my second year, I decided to get a bike. So I would bike to a lot of close by places, um, go get breakfast or go on a hike or just a bike ride. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, I, I think, yeah, having a car definitely helps a lot. Mm -hmm. um, apart from that, I, I find it difficult to compare to India, so I, I'll leave it at <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so let's talk a little bit about um, the neighborhoods that you guys have lived in, that you spend time in. Um, let's talk about some of those. What are your favorite neighborhoods? Uh, I can start on that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, as an international student, I think uh, coming into a new country with just like two suitcases, I think it was very important to find a place that was kind of close by to the school. There are a lot of good options. So uh, me and a couple of friends uh, decided to take up a place uh, called Campus Crossing. There is a free shuttle that runs to the school every 15 to 20 minutes. So that's really convenient and it's furnished. Uh, so we can literally move in with our bags. Uh, there's a, quite a few other of our classmates who live a little further down the street uh, on a campus called Post Briarcliff um, that has a little more flexibility in terms of like where um, you, like all the furniture that you bring and things like that. But overall, the whole area around campus, I think, is really green, really uh, awesome. I bike to school every day. I think it's fantastic. Um, there's lots of areas close by, lots of bars, and places where you can go play games. I don't drink, but I always go because uh, it's awesome to play hand-eye coordination games with your classmates when they're drunk. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, it's interesting because my, so I have the kind of the opposite experience from Caleb because I was here for four years for undergrad. I lived on campus, and I agree, it's beautiful, it's green, I, I love the area, but I was kind of ready for something different and was ready to actually move into, you know, the city of Atlanta versus just Emory campus. So I was one of the people that lived off of campus and I lived in two different parts of town during the course of the year. So I lived in this funky little up and coming neighborhood ca called Cabbage Town. Um, it's near Krog Market, which I'm sure, you know, all of you will go to at some point. Um, the new markets, uh, Pont City and Krog are really wonderful. So Cabbage Town is, you know, lots of kind of graffiti and wall art and artists everywhere, very eclectic neighborhood. Um, and then I moved to Midtown a couple of weeks, about a month ago now, and I love Midtown. That makes me feel kind of at home. It's a you know big city feel. I live right near the park, which is beautiful, and which kind of gives me that same opportunity that living close to campus does. So I decided it was worth it to drive those you know 20 minutes or so to get to campus, um, but have the exposure to the different communities in Atlanta. So we did have a, a question come in, um, and I, we don't have the stats on this, but we might have a, a sense just from anecdotal uh, conversations. Do students end up buying homes or flats in Atlanta after graduating from the MBA program? And I think that really depends on whether they end up getting full-time jobs here in Atlanta mm -hmm. or not, um, and, and the probably personal choice too. But yeah. Well, I can, let me jump in because yeah. I live uh, pretty close to campus and I see students all the time in Lowe's because <laughs> they've just bought a house and they are 
Um, I, I literally can't go to Lowe's without running into yeah. multiple recent graduates. So I do think those that stay here um, do probably buy within a year or two after graduating um, if they have secured employment in Atlanta and want to stay. But feel free to add. I've seen the same trend, honestly, yeah. especially people who start to have like families or get dogs or you know mm -hmm. kind of build their life here. Um, I think they, a good number of my classmates have either decided to buy or will rent for a little while and then will buy eventually. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So um, we all know MBAs are expensive regardless of where you end up uh, going, but the location can obviously have a big impact on that. Yeah. What, uh, in terms of the cost of living, how do you feel about the cost of living in Atlanta versus your previous cities? Well, I, uh, I mean, it's an easy answer for me. San Francisco is going to be crazy expensive. I know that already. <laughs> and I do not think I can buy a house there anytime soon after graduation. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I agree uh, with uh, what Nicole said. I, um, I probably have spent um, between forty to fifty thousand lesser than some of my friends who w who went to you know other schools um, like in New York or Boston. I know that for a fact. Mm -hmm. uh, just the simple math of doing the <laughs> rent calculation is a big <laughs> thing. Um, I think. Uh, that also makes Atlanta a fantastic uh, first city to work in immediately after your graduation when you're not trying to pay off, pay off your loans and um, you don't have to spend as much. Yeah. Yeah, I completely agree. And I think, I mean, similarly, you know, have lived in San Francisco and Boston, so two places where rent is, you know, almost kind of a joke to some people. Um, so I think that was a big one. And the other piece that, that was kind of different for me was just traveling out of Atlanta. Um, it's not that it's you know cheaper necessarily, uh, although I think sometimes the airfare was a little bit more reasonable. But I think just being able to kind of get in and out of this city is easier than some other cities. And it's helped me, I think, become a little more global and also to an extent because of the money I've been able to save. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll save you know however much, and I think Caleb's quote was about right, but on rent, that money goes towards you know exploring and doing things during my MBA that maybe some of my friends are just a little more strapped to do. So that was, it, it was a good, a positive benefit, I think, of this city. Okay. So we have a few more questions coming in already. So great job, um, viewers. Keep them coming. This is what we're here for. <laughs> uh, and this one is actually, uh, I think, Caleb, this one's right up your alley. Sure. How immigrant friendly is the location, especially for Indians? I think it's awesome. You get some of the best Indian food here. Um, <laughs> I, it was a funny story, actually. One, I, one of my friends had come to visit me about a month ago, and he said, hey, man, you know what? I had to travel like halfway across the world to have some of the best keema pao. It's like a very traditional uh, Indian like food that you get at this place called Chai Pani. Um, that's the, the one side of it to be settling in. I think the other side, uh, which I guess your question points to, is just uh, in terms of is there any negative attitude towards people who are coming from another country. And I would say that I have not faced any such thing uh, in Atlanta. People have been extremely friendly. Uh, almost everybody smiles at you when they pass by. And I think uh, that's just a function of it being a southern city, I guess. Um, and I've, I've, like I said, not faced any problems. I also just want to add, I mean, people are from everywhere that live in Atlanta too. So I think that also adds to we're curious yeah. about other cultures and um, we want to try new foods and learn new things and that's p the benefit of being in a large city. I think you mm -hmm. find like-minded people that that are very just, yeah, curious about others and, and what makes them tick. So, I agree. Um, yeah, that's yeah. a good point. We have four people on the panel. None of us are native to Atlanta <laughs> yeah. or even Georgia. Yeah. Um, it is a very a diverse city, um, both from US geography, but across the world. Mm. So good point. Um, so another question that came in was about Atlanta traffic, <laughs> right? Which everyone hears about <laughs> the dreaded Atlanta traffic. Um, what is your commute like to class? And I know this is going to be different for the two of you since yeah. you live in completely different neighborhoods, which is good perspective for students. Sure. So mine's the longer commute of the two of us. Although sometimes when you're closer, it's even longer here. Yeah. So <laughs> I don't know. But um, I actually got lucky because the two locations I've lived in, when I'm coming to campus, I'm going against traffic. So very rarely do I actually have to sit in that traffic that you hear about. Um, there are just like these two main roads that run perpendicular to the, the ones that have the traffic. Um, probably from Cabbage Town. So that's more south kind of closer to the airport almost, not that far south, but 
takes about 20 minutes, as I mentioned, midtown, about the same. Uh, so I gave myself anywhere between like 30 and 40 minutes to get here, door to door, park, walk into the building, everything. And I was usually still early to class. So I don't know if that helps provide some perspective, but it never really took me longer than that. Um, and oftentimes it took me less time. Well, like I said, there's two places that I know uh, very close by the campus, Campus Crossing and Post Briarcliff. Mm -hmm. I think from there, um, anywhere between 10 to 15 minutes is the commute. Uh, I can bike faster than that, so sometimes I just <laughs> prefer doing that. But when I'm running, uh, like it's too hot or it's too cold, I try to take the shuttle and it's like 10 to 15 minutes to class. Great. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's shift gears a little bit and start talking about all the fun things there are to do at Atlanta. Um, so there never seems to be a shortage of, of things. There's festivals every weekend, it seems mm -hmm. like, especially in the fall and spring. Um, concerts, sporting events, lots of food destinations. What are some of the favorite things um, that you like to do in the city? So I'm a big music buff. So for me, it's all the music festivals and artists that come through Atlanta, which is a lot of them. I really like Music Midtown. It's one of the bigger festivals here, and it draws a huge crowd, both from like Georgia and Atlanta, but also from out of town. I always have friends visit from out of town. Last year, three of my best friends from high school actually flew in um, to come to the music festival to see, I think it was like Weezer was exciting, and a couple other kind of different performers that we didn't know and now listen to all the time. Um, and actually, part of the reason I wanted to move up to Midtown was to be close to Piedmont Park because that's where a lot of those festivals are. So I think it was a couple weeks ago there was an arts festival and I could just, you know, open the window and listen to the music coming from there and kind of see the people walking around. Um, and then food, you talked about food. This is a big food city. Um, and I think that actually affordability plays into that a little bit because you can go out to eat and get drinks yeah. and it's more affordable than Boston and New York for sure. Um, and there's just a huge variety. So I talked about the markets before. You could go to Krog, you could go to Pond City Market, all sorts of different types of food, fast, you know, sit down, whatever you want. Um, and then there's the rooftop that opened up, which I think is probably one of my favorite mm -hmm. spots that I've been to uh, for drinks and just appetizers with friends. It's been, it's been great. I still haven't been to like half of what's offered in Atlanta, so. I agree, I'm like Nicola too, also a big music buff. I'm going to the Shakinese Festival this coming weekend. There's Jack White and Queens of the Stone Age playing some of my favorite bands. Um, I've uh, there's also like a couple of uh, really good free events. So like the Atlanta Jazz Festival that happens at Piedmont Park. You can just show up, mm -hmm. um, sit on the la lawn and lounge all day. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, there's uh, if you're from India like me, there's uh, movie theaters which which play all the Indian movies. Uh, mm -hmm. So we go there regularly. Um, I already said the Indian food here is fantastic. Uh, there's, there's a place called Buford Highway, which I think Laurie mm -hmm. will mm -hmm. uh, like talk about a little bit more. Yeah. Uh, and just touching on the festival, I um, I think that's maybe my favorite thing to do in Atlanta is festivals in the fall and the spring, because mm -hmm. our weather is fantastic. Um, and most of them, like you mentioned, are free. So mm -hmm. you walk around, you listen to music, um, look at local artists. Um, and we actually have, in my neighborhood, a festival in two weeks, so mm -hmm. uh, the Spring Fling. So you guys, if you're in town, yeah. you should definitely <laughs> come. It's, it's a, a lot of fun. But um, And that's kind of what I mentioned earlier, like the communities. You can actually really get involved in your local community, because most of the communities do hold a festival or a tour of homes or something like that. So you know, whether you like art or music or you love food, I think there's something for everyone in mm -hmm. that. Um, I, I do I do really believe that like we get big artists, but we also have small acts. So there's a place in um, Decatur that I love, um, Eddie's Attic. That's it's incredibly oh, small yeah. and, yes, I love and it. intimate Attic. for musicians, <laughs> and so and that's actually very close to campus. So mm -hmm. in Decatur, is an area that has lots of wonderful restaurants as well. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, I think that you don't have to go into Midtown or downtown. We have a nice little pocket here that um, then they're often not that crowded. So, yeah, um, true. so yeah. And then also in terms of international food, I think Buford Highway is, is really interesting. Um, it has pretty much every type of food you can imagine and um, incredibly inexpensive. So um, <laughs> many of them are BYOB. So that's kind of fun too. So, um, but yeah, I think that in terms of what the um, the culture of Atlanta is is really wonderful and festivals are definitely my favorite. So, 
That's good. Yeah, and if Definitely. you're a sports fan like I am, there's great sports teams in Atlanta. Um, they just launched the inaugural, last year was the inaugural uh, MLS mm -hmm. uh, season oh, yeah. for oh, yeah. for the Atlanta United, and they uh, had the highest attendance of oh, any yeah. team in the entire league. So there's a huge following mm -hmm. for all sports. Obviously, you have football, college football is a big thing down here, but also pro football, basketball, you name it. Mm -hmm. um, so a little, little bit of something for everyone. And the new stadium is fantastic. It's amazing. Yeah. So and affordable, which is another mm -hmm. theme uh, here. But they actually made it very family friendly and affordable. So um, yeah, you, the the crazy stadium prices um, they really took that down a notch, mm -hmm. which That's is awesome. nice. Mm -hmm. A few more questions just came in. Um, this one uh, is about as someone who would like to invite my family to Atlanta as at some point in time, I'd like to know about the community involvement opportunities for my family while they stay in Atlanta and visit. Um, and uh, he goes on to say that I, actually he comes from India, so I don't know if you family has visited or not. Or well, um, Nicola, you can yeah. answer this yeah. too, as if you have family come and visit while uh, while you're in the program and what there is to do for for visitors that you have. Well, my parents are coming for graduation. Uh, they, they couldn't make it until now, but this is going to be fun when they come. Um, I have a couple of things planned, like both my parents are kind of outdoorsy people. There's a lot of nice uh, like trails around the campus and even in Atlanta. So I plan to take them there. Um, I really like the dolphin show at the aquarium. <laughs> I think it's probably <laughs> one of the best I've seen. Uh, going to take them there. Um, there's a couple of the standard ones, like you know the world of Coke and the the tour of the factory, and that those kind of things are uh, cool. Uh, I I also really like that Atlanta is uh, you know a very easy driving distance from a lot of mm -hmm. uh, nice places. We plan to maybe drive down to Nashville sometime, uh, go eat some good food, check out some good music. So that's part of the plan. Yeah, yeah. I had uh, my little sister visit. She lives in San Francisco, so it was definitely a high bar to make sure that she likes my city too. <laughs> um, but I took her, so I did kind of a mix of you know botanical gardens, which is similarly mm -hmm. to what you said about Coca Cola yeah. World. Those places that you kind of have to go. Um, we didn't get to do a hike at Stone Mountain. It's something I wanted to do. Um, that's actually something we did my senior year at Emory before we graduated. So sunrise hike. So I think. And that's like a 30 to 40 minute drive outside mm -hmm. of the city. So if you're into the outdoors or your family likes that, there's a lot to do there. Um, my parents are kind of night owls. So I showed them the nightlife here in Atlanta. Lots of fun kind of bars, live music. So we did that. Um, and, you know, honestly, we got a picnic blanket and took it to Piedmont Park, stopped by Trader Joe's, got some snacks and just hung out and people watched and kind of enjoyed the weather. Um, and that was also a great way to kind of See the see the community in action and um, just enjoy the sunshine with them. So, so one more question for you specifically. Mm -hmm. um, the question is about uh, as a one year MBA yes. student, do you really have that much time to explore and enjoy the city? Yes, yes, you do. Okay, so for the summer you don't, <laughs> but that's good because it's it's hot anyways, and it's like I don't know if I even wanted to be outside that much in the summer. So you know you'll have to work hard for those first couple of months, and you probably won't have as much time. Although the school does a good job putting on events, so we did have a couple of weekend events you know, throughout July. Um, but once you start your fall semester and into spring, not only do you have time, but you have the classmates that you merge with who've already been here for a year. So if you're new to the city, you have all sorts of guidance and people inviting you to go to all these different places. Um, so again, it's really those first couple months that you have to buckle down and then you're good to go. I've been able to do anything and everything. And then if you choose to stay here, then you get obviously even more of an opportunity. So, Awesome. Yeah. All right. Thanks for the feedback. Um, so we're going to keep the keep talking about different things Atlanta has to offer. Um, one of the things that um, Atlanta maybe isn't necessarily known for until you get here is the amount of green space that mm -hmm. is here. Um, there's actually 125 miles of multi-use trails. So it's not a walkable city in the sense uh, for commuters, but there is a lot of green and walking space and trails. Um, throughout the city and a lot of parks. Have you guys utilized any of that? Um, what are some of your favorite parks and activities to do just outdoors? Uh, well, Nicola already mentioned uh, about Piedmont Park. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, uh, there is uh, Lullwater Reserve, which is right down uh, the, the road from yeah. school. I usually go there in the middle of the day for a run. Uh, it's awesome. Um, and I come back. Well, that's kind of second year life, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> you have, you have too much, too much going on. Um, 
Uh, Nicole also already mentioned Stone Mountain. This mm. is a really nice hike if you go there. Um, I would say, um, apart from these outdoorsy activities, there's also the Belt Line, uh, which is uh, which is a fantastic strip of, I guess, food and drink mm -hmm. places. Most people hang out there on the weekends. Uh, in business school, we don't have class on Fridays in the second year, so yeah. Fridays we're also there. <laughs> uh, you you almost inevitably uh, run into somebody from class when we go on the Belt Line. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and you know, we talked a lot about big spaces, so kind of the popular like Piedmont Park, Beltline, Stone Mountain hiking areas. There are little parks just spread out through communities. So when I lived in Cabbage Town, I don't even know the name of this park, but there was this tiny little park that was like half a mile between me and Krog Market, and um, my roommates and I at the time would go and throw a frisbee and throw a football. And so, and I feel like in Candler Park, which is another neighborhood kind of between mm -hmm. Cabbage Town and Emory, there are plenty of parks too, so, and close to campus. Oh, yeah. And you mentioned Low Water, that was always a favorite. So I think um, they do, the city does a good job kind of building around its nature and incorporating like all those different pieces. So sure, you might not be walking through like Manhattan, that's what we mean by walkable, right? But at the same time, you're walking down the street and there's like a park to your right, and then suddenly there's like a restaurant row uh, on the other side of the street. So it's nice, it's a nice mix. I would just add that like um, almost every Saturday or Sunday I go to play soccer at Candler Field. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. Yeah. Probably one of the best uh, well-maintained uh, parks that right. I've played mm -hmm. soccer on. Right. Yeah, so we had a question come in. It was asking about where do um, MBAs post-grad live if they stay in the city? And I think the answer is it, it depends on your personal preference. So. Mm -hmm. Um, Atlanta is really divided up into a lot of little neighborhoods, and each one has its own kind of vibe. But each one also has parks, and it has a little mm -hmm. downtown area with restaurants and stores. And so it just it just depends, you know, where do you want to be in the city? Where are you working? And are, do you want more artsy or more music scene? Are you a suburban person? You want to go outside the perimeter and um, commute into the city? So there really is something for everyone. It just depends, you know, what you're looking for. And I do agree that like kind of where you choose to, who you choose to work for really mm -hmm. does probably dictate a lot yeah. of where you live after graduation. Yeah. Um, because Atlanta traffic is, is no joke. So um, if, you, if you can live closer to work, it's often better. But some people, depending, um, can take MARTA. So if you work in, like, live in Midtown and work in downtown or yeah. in Buckhead, yeah. you actually could utilize public transportation. So um, it's not like a city like New York or Boston right. or, or even San Francisco that has, I'd say, really good public transportation. Um, we, we have an area of opportunity there, but I do think that um, it just really, yeah, it, it does depend on where you mm -hmm. land your job and, yeah. and how far of a commute you want. So. so I think that's a really good transition now. We've talked a lot about the lifestyle opportunities mm -hmm. in Atlanta. Let's talk a little bit more about kind of the career and business opportunities yeah. that Atlanta has to offer. Um, and there are quite a bit. So. Lori, do you want to kick it off and just talk to us about, you know, we're in a major city, talk about the corporate relationships we have, mm -hmm. how we leverage those um, in our MBA program, um, and especially through the, the CMC, the Career Management Center. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and I think before I dive into kind of Atlanta focus, I don't want this conversation to be all about Atlanta companies. Sure. Because um, I don't know if I brought a copy of our employment report, so if you have not looked at it, it's online. Um, it's a great uh, visual of where our students take internships, of where the one-year class um, takes opportunities and the two-year class full-time. So um, it's a great document. I highly suggest that you, you look at it if you have not already seen it. I know we have prospects on the phone as well as already probably admitted and deposited students. So um, make sure you do check it out. Uh, so really, I mean, if you want to stay in Atlanta, you can stay in Atlanta. There are many companies here. If you want to leave Atlanta and you want to go work for J.P. Morgan in, in New York or you want to go work for Amazon in mm -hmm. Seattle or San Francisco or we have people at Google this year, Microsoft. Um, I mean, it, it really depends. Um, we have many companies that recruit from us. So um, it is not just Atlanta-based employment. Um, and we are heavily based in Atlanta, but I think that that's by student interest. So many students come here, or they're from either they're from here and they want to stay here, or they come here and they fall in love with the, I would say, kind of easy life of Atlanta. So um, it's you know it is a big city, but it's it's f 
fairly affordable in comparison to some of the others we discussed. So we have a lot of students that really do want to stay here. So, um, and I don't know if you guys want to talk about, you know, how you decided what city that you wanted to, to live in um, upon graduation, but I do feel like I, I wanted to just make sure I mentioned that all opportunities are not based in Atlanta necessarily, so. Um, I think uh, I agree with, totally with Laurie. Uh, especially as an international student, I didn't really have a set um, destination of what I wanted to do just immediately after business school. Like, well, I want to be in Atlanta, or I want to be in New York. Or I was I was fairly open. Uh, I was uh, I I think I weighted the industry that I wanted to go in a little higher than just the city, uh, and so that's why I ended up uh, going out onto the West Coast because I wanted to get into tech. Um, I feel like, uh, however, having said that, it's the uh, you cannot underestimate uh, the value of proximity to all these companies, especially when it comes to uh, companies that are uh, networking heavy. So a lot of the consulting companies are going to be like that. A lot of the banks are obviously like that. Um, the the ability to say, uh, hey, do you want to catch up for a coffee over the on on a Thursday or a Friday or, mm -hmm. or or breakfast on Monday morning? Whatever I think, uh, that's a big advantage. Uh, we know that almost all the banking companies of obviously prefer that. Uh, the consulting companies also it becomes very very easy to um, coordinate those meetings. Uh, I think those are kind of your first uh, steps into getting into any of any of the firms that you kind of dream of getting into after business mm -hmm. school. Um, so yeah, being in Atlanta, I think almost all the big uh, consulting firms mm -hmm. they have their you know south. South America, South operations headed out from Atlanta. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. fantastic. Yeah, I mean, I think for me it was a couple of different things. Um, I was similar where I didn't necessarily have, you know, this burning desire to move home. I've lived there for a long time, wanted to try something new, have lived out on the West Coast, might actually end up there at some point. So I'm like, this is a really cool place to explore for a little while while I have the time and flexibility to do that. I'm also very lucky because I now have a double network here. So I have, I don't know, maybe 20% of my undergraduate class and, and good friends are here. And a good chunk of people stay from the MBA program. Um, we have this like group me message now for all the people staying and living close by. We're trying to move into places that aren't mm -hmm. too far from each other so we could keep hanging out after we graduate. Um, so there's something to be said for that. And then for me, and you talked about this a little bit, Caleb. Um, so the Deloitte office down here, very strong also very strong in healthcare, which is the industry I'm excited about and trying to pursue long term. So for me, it was also about you know getting a job at a firm I wanted to work at, but also in an area that I know they're kind of investing in down south. Um, so happy to stay, excited to stay. Yeah, and just kind of expanding on the way we work with different companies at the Career Management Center. So it, it really depends on how the company recruits, right? Mm -hmm. So there are companies that have very structured recruitment efforts. Um, those are kind of the consulting firms mm -hmm. that, that um, Caleb mentioned and, and Nicole is going to be going to. Um, it's also the investment banks. It's, um, you know, some organizations have very structured recruiting programs like Coca-Cola has a brand management and then a finance leadership program, but it's very structured in their recruitment efforts. So we work with companies that have structured recruitment very differently than we work with companies that have unstructured recruiting efforts. So many large companies may have very structured hiring for undergrads, but not necessarily MBAs. So all their MBA hiring is done what we call just in time. So that happens, you know, you wouldn't be able to apply of those positions until right before um, graduation um, because they want someone to start immediately versus the people that have very structured opportunities they'll make an offer nine months in advance of a start date mm -hmm. so that's it, we work with companies very differently depending on how they hire but the benefit I think of being in Atlanta is not only do you get the structured recruitment but we have developed lots of um, unstructured recruiting efforts and we're able to do that because we are in the city of Atlanta where these large corporations are so for example, um, companies like the Home Depot, Cox Communications, um, let's see, we did one with Georgia Pacific, we'll be doing one with Delta Airlines, um, where we have a really large critical mass of alumni. We hold networking events at the CMC coordinates, and um, you can you can network with employees or alumni that are currently working there. And to be honest, that's how you get a job at large companies is, is through networking. There are way too many applications online. So if you don't have someone that is saying, hey, look at this resume to the hiring manager, it's likely it will never be seen. So we have developed a lot of programming around that. We also have a spring career fair 
that we host every year that is really focused on Atlanta and those kind of just-in-time opportunities. So, and those, the companies that we target for those range from startups to, I'd say, you know, Fortune 500 companies. So, um, yeah, we, I think that we have to, we have very, um, strategic conversations with employers, that's what my team does all the time, and figuring out how they fit with our student interest. Um, and then based on that, we develop a plan for them. So hopefully that helps. And if I don't know if you guys want to add anything, but. I'd love to hear from you guys, mm -hmm. what kind of um, conferences or networking opportunities did you partake in, whether they were um, provided by the Career Management Center in Emory or just other opportunities that you found because you are in a big city like in Atlanta? Sure. Um, so, and I gave this advice to someone this morning, actually, but I, I think my biggest piece of advice is just go to everything. So, all the events that the CMC had, like, even if I could only make it to part of the event, I would go, you know, meet whoever I can. Um, I think all of those opportunities were very helpful, but there are also, I have this kind of, like, side interest in the startup mm -hmm. world that actually is kind of big underground here in Atlanta. So I went to Tech Village, which maybe Lori will stand mm -hmm. on later, a couple of times. And they have all sorts of informal like coffee chats and events that you can just show up at. Um, so I did that too. And then I also just reached out to alums. So there's definitely a, a, a way to do it, not just cold calling people. But um, I reached out and met people and met people far in advance of recruiting. My process was a little bit different mm -hmm. than kind of the typical structured process too. Um, but it was, it was pretty much just about showing up going to everything I could and um, creating opportunities where there weren't opportunities. I, I'd just like to add on to what uh, Nicola said. I think uh, there are some fantastic opportunities that uh, the career management provides, uh, but there's a couple of other ones that mm -hmm. you know I've gone on, uh, especially those are organized by professors. Mm -hmm. So there was one uh, conference that I recently went to called the Robson Conference, which is organized by Professor Jeff Rosenzweig. Um, and he brought some fantastic speakers. The chairman of Home Depot was one of them. There was a uh, Forbes 30 under 30 uh, guy called Adam Getty. He started a company called Ionic, which is also based in Atlanta. Um, so great opportunities to network. I also went on uh, another trek that was organized by Professor Klaas mm -hmm. Bax. Uh, it was for the class called Venture Capital and Private Equity. And we went to see uh, all these uh, really good FinTech firms that are, you know, thriving in Atlanta like yeah, um, yeah. like Nicola just mentioned. So that was actually a really good segue because I wanted to ask you, Lori, about um, the startup community in Atlanta. Can you talk a little bit about what that looks like and then how students can get involved? Absolutely. Um, so as Nicola mentioned, I, I would say Atlanta Tech Village, I think I, I was recently looking this up, I think they're like the fourth largest tech hub in America. So, um, and what that is, it's, it's a collaborative workspace for people that are, that have startups. And so it can, you can rent a chair or you can rent an office and mm -hmm. eventually you get kicked out, which is a good <laughs> thing because that means your company is so large that they need you to move somewhere else and get space somewhere else. So um, within that community though, you don't have to necessarily rent space to join some of the events that, that they have. So I know they do like, a, they call it startup chow down, I think, yes. or something. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So um, it's a weekly lunch on Fridays that even if you're not a member, you can pay to go. And really, it's just to have lunch with other people that are interested in um, entrepreneurship or startups in the Atlanta area. And then after that, I believe they have something called pitch practice. So you mm -hmm. can mm -hmm. kind of um, listen to people practice their pitch. Um, you could practice your pitch, um, things like that. So. I think Atlanta Tech Village, they also do a very structured kind of internship recruitment fair. Um, a lot of the opportunities that, and we do absolutely advertise it, a lot of the opportunities for these, maybe they think they want engineers or, or whatever. But mm -hmm. so as a business school student, I think it's important if you're really passionate about the startup community to find startups that really align with your interest and passion. And then pitch your idea about why you need to do a project for them. So doing project work for these startups is a great way to get, first of all, experience to see if you can handle it because mm -hmm. there is a different um, risk level, right, with a startup than there is going to an Amazon or, or, yeah. or a Deloitte. Yeah. So um, you, can, you can figure out how comfortable you are with that. Um, and so I think Atlanta Tech Village is, is a great um, resource to tap into. And if you're interested in startups, it's, it's a must. Yeah. Um, there's also another one that we have, um, we've advertised some of their events. Um, Sandbox is another kind of um, workspace community. Um, it's um, in kind of the Midtown area. And so they have a Tech Square event um, 
internship career fair every uh, spring that we also advertise to students. So um, startups will not be coming on campus for, for structured recruitment. That's not, they can't project out probably a month sometimes, much yeah. less nine months. Um, but there are definitely a lot of ways to get tapped into those communities. And I think that the ownership is on you though, as a student, like to know, is this something I'm passionate about? If so, then talk to your career advisor or you know, come to a session that we have where we yeah. talk about the ways that you can get involved. So um, anything you guys want yeah, to add I would, to that? I would love to add to that. So I worked in a startup before coming to business school, so I'm very passionate about that. I eventually want to start up something of my own. Uh, so for me, I think apart from what Lori mentioned, there's like two uh, really uh, kind of almost gateways uh, uh, who are professors at business school, Professor Charlie Getz, and I also m already mentioned Dr. Klaus Parks. Uh, they both have excellent uh, connections in the Atlanta Tech Village and just the whole uh, startup uh, scene in Atlanta. Uh, they, they both offer classes on entrepreneurship, actually, and there's, uh, there's a competition called Pitch the Professors mm -hmm. where you can uh, pitch your idea to these two professors. There's another one called uh, Venture Capital. So as part of that competi competition, five uh, growing entrepreneurs in Atlanta come to class and pitch their idea and you get to be you know a VC firm and ask mm -hmm. them those questions so it's it's awesome to kind of get to know the other side and yeah. you know just really build uh, connections if you want to get into it and like Laurie mentioned these are not firms that are going to be coming in you know having a posting on campus right. and it's <laughs> it's a lot uh, about how uh, whether you really like it whether you r like the firm that uh, the work that they're doing and they like you um, I would also mention like there's also the Entrepreneurship Club. They had org actually organized an event in collaboration with Georgia Tech's um, mm -hmm. Entrepreneurship Club. I think that was a fantastic event. Yeah, um, I'd love so. to just really quickly add because I worked at, so it was a startup spun off from a big firm before I came to business school here and there's a lot of that too. Mm -hmm. So we talk about these big firms and then we talk about the small startups. But there's an in-between where there's like Anthem Innovation Hub, mm -hmm. and that's technically part of Anthem Blue Shield, but really it's kind of a separate thing. And I think there's a lot of opportunity there too, and that's only growing. So it could feel like a startup, but you could still be working within a larger company, um, which you know maybe mitigates the risk a little, but mm -hmm. gives you that exposure too. So that's an, just another experience. Um, I'd love to hear from you guys about your experiences either engaging with companies, different types of companies, engaging with um, executives or different business leaders in the community, whether it's through the program, like your courses in Impact, um, mm -hmm. your consulting projects, or classroom speakers that are brought in, or conferences. I mean, we've touched on that a little bit, but just kind of um, your access to people in the business community, both through the program and, and out. Yeah, so I think professors, Caleb mentioned, um, there's a professor here who's also hugely focused in healthcare, so Dr. Culler. So that's someone who I, you know, connected with a lot because that's, again, area of interest. Um, and he knows a lot of people and I've kind of been able to just see what's out there and see who I can get connected with after I graduate. Um, I think Impact, it's interesting you bring that up. So I'm a team guide for Impact. It's this program here at Emory, basically the teams uh, get to work with real life companies and do a consulting project for them. That's obviously a huge amount of exposure, both for the teams and the team guides. So connecting to the client, I worked with my team on a healthcare startup, actually spun out from the Emory Medical School. So I was a doctor at Emory, Medi Emory Medical. Um, so that's a really interesting experience too. And there's a whole breadth of companies you can talk to there. And I think lastly, I mean, this isn't really, it's not conference, it's not like an official event, but just, again, networking with alums. So yeah. alums here, from what from my experience, have been so open to connecting. And they host events and they try to get involved and they even come to kegs, um, to some of our events here. So I think just really making sure that you do everything you can to meet the people you know, who are a year ahead of you in your year, the year behind you, um, that ends up being the network and they are the ones who kind of open up a lot of those doors. I, th I totally agree with uh, Nicola. There's, uh, I, my impact client was Coca-Cola, so I did get to see you know, that whole mm -hmm. the big company, uh, you know, how, how do they work. It's, it's, it was pretty exciting. Um, and I think by far what I've seen uh, the most useful sort of part of engaging with these companies is getting in touch with alums. And I've seen that 
people go far above and beyond what you would expect mm -hmm. uh, in these in these interactions with alums. Uh, so in my personal example, when I um, was recruiting for Amazon, um, I was actually uh, connected to someone very senior in the Alexa division uh, through s through a lady uh, who's actually a mentor of mine, and she's also an alum. So that that worked out really well mm -hmm. for me. Um, so yeah, I think apart from yeah. these two, and you know, having the opportunity to meet all these companies when they come on campus, and having the proximity, I think that covers pretty much almost any way that you could possibly <laughs> interact with these companies. And um, just before I forget, I do want to mention that um, we do get large conferences, MBA mm -hmm. conferences, though, that come to Atlanta because we are a really big city. So, in fact, this summer um, in June, uh, the Forte Women's Conference, the MBA Women's Conference, is going to be here. So if you, um, I, I highly suggest it. Last year it was in, uh, actually it was in Seattle. It was hosted mm -hmm. by Amazon. Um, this year it will be here in Atlanta. So if you do not, if you're not already registered and um, you're a female that is interested, I would highly suggest it. I think it's a fantastic conference. So yeah. we also get, you know, these come in our backyard quite often. I think we've had National Black MBA yep. here mm -hmm. yeah. recently. Um, we've had we had Net Impact last yep. year. Mm -hmm. So just in the city. So it's helpful when it's here because you don't have to cover those travel costs. So that mm -hmm. you would if if you're traveling for it. So yeah. Yeah. Great point. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, Nicola, you mentioned kegs, which yes. dovetails very nicely <laughs> into a question that we had, which was, um, what type of social events through Emory have you participated in, and do the most social events occur on campus or outside of campus? So kegs is keeping everyone at Goizueta social. It is a weekly, every Thursday afternoon event held um, here at Goizueta, right outside. There's music and food mm -hmm. and beverages and games. Um, and it's open to all of our students, and it's yep. a lot of fun. Um, but I'll let you guys expand on the, the social experience of the program. Yeah, so I could speak a little bit to the one year, too, because maybe mm -hmm. it's a little bit different. Um, mm -hmm. I guess the, the short answer is there's a lot. Um, it's a big part of business school to network and kind of be connected to your classmates. So even from the very beginning, the first two weeks of orientation, you're thrown in. There is a, we had like the Lake Lanier couple of days where we did hiking, climbing, um, and then beverages and food at night. <laughs> um, and then there were all sorts of kind of happy hours, networking events throughout the summer. Eventually a lot of student organized events as well. Yeah. So I mean, we have like semi-formal, we have formal, we have some of those bigger events, but kegs is every week and it's a great time and it's just the best way to end the year with your classmates. And usually we end up keeping the night going and going out for food later that night and then doing you know whatever, dancing, whatever that night after. Um, so I think you know all of my weeks, especially after the summer is over, have been packed with events. Um, I don't know if you're going next week. Next week, uh, a lot of people from the graduating class are going to, to the beach for a week. So that's something <laughs> we're doing to kind of cap off a, a I think, a really <laughs> hard but also rewarding year for all of us. So it's it, it's pretty much constant. Um, and you could do as much or as little as you want. But I mean, my recommendation and my experience has been to get, again, show up and go to everything. And like, when else do you have this much time and this many people to kind of hang out with um, and enjoy? I agree. I just add on to Nicola there. Uh, sometimes a lot of these kegs are actually organized by people from a certain country. Uh, like for example, the one th yeah. from India it was uh, coincided with Holi, so it was really mm -hmm. fun playing with a lot of colors. Get get to uh, introduce that to a lot of our American friends and other other people from other countries. So that is fantastic. Um, there's there was the Korean kegs. There's the Japanese kegs. I. I don't think I would have ever tried that that <laughs> many uh, varieties of food. There's like a spicy noodle eating challenge, which I won because I'm from <laughs> India and it doesn't doesn't affect me too much. So that that, that there's a lot. I I mean, if I think back now, there's so many memories that I attach mm -hmm. to uh, uh, being at kegs and hang hang around with all of my classmates in in, an, in you know social setting. Mm -hmm. So well, we had another question come in. I don't know that this applies to either of you, but um, you would you would be able to answer from your uh, experiences with some of your cohort uh, mates. Um, what opportunities are there for students with families? Um, and I'll just say personally, I was working with uh, one of our two-year MBA graduates who had one child before he came, mm -hmm. had another child just a few weeks ago as he's about to graduate. Um, and one of the reasons that he said that he chose Atlanta was because it was so family friendly. His wife was able to find a job very easily um, you know, for the two years that they were here. Um, and I'd also like to mention that we actually have a 
Partners Club. So mm -hmm. we do provide a lot of support um, to students who have families and try to incorporate them into the program and program activities. Can yes, you guys I know who you're talking about. Yeah, I bet you do. We're all very excited for him. But um, yeah, I mean, I can't necessarily speak to having a family here in Atlanta, but a lot of my classmates do. Um, and that ranges from like a boyfriend, girlfriend to, you know, wife and kids or husband and kids. So it's really the broad spectrum. And to your point, there is, I think, a lot of inclusion there. So kegs, for example, you can bring your family. And one of my good friends also had a second baby recently. Um, but he would always invite like his wife and his two kids, and we love them. And um, his daughter is, you know, one of our favorite classmates now. <laughs> so, um, so I think there's a lot of opportunity. I think there was one social event the entire year where there weren't um, plus ones, and it was just because it was our small class and it was our like last hurrah, 50 days till graduation kind of thing. Everything else, everyone's welcome. And you know, my sister was in town, and I brought her to formal with me, and she got to meet everyone. So. I think there's a lot of opportunity um, and even actually encouragement of bringing family members, significant others, and even close friends to events. I was going to say, well, I see a lot of babies at KEGS, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lots of babies. So, yeah, I see a lot of small children when I go down there to, to chat with you guys. Yeah. So I definitely can see that they're welcome. So yeah. Yeah. That's great. Um, OK, so we have a few more questions coming in. What is the weather in extreme seasons like, specifically winter and summer? Winter's beautiful here. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, coming from Boston. Yeah. <laughs> well, winter yeah. winter, winter is not yeah. an extreme season. Yeah, in it's, not <laughs> it's not. Yeah. But it's but probably we get snow. Yeah. You know, we had, um, we, for, at least for me, because I am from Houston and now <laughs> live here where we don't get snow very often. But um, it does shut the city down usually because we're not really used to that kind of thing but um, it, it was beautiful and it was a lot of fun and so I personally like when it we have these little bouts but they don't last long it, the the sun comes out it melts the snow and you're back to your yeah. your um, daily life so um, I don't know if you guys agree with the with the yeah little sprinkle I mean, of snow, snow we get oh, yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> the summer is supposed to be really hot if you're in the one year you won't have to deal with that too much <laughs> I'll tell you that I don't know this year it's been fine so far that's yeah, pretty it's, mild it's awesome I, I, yeah, I agree. There's been no extremes so far. I mean, summer was fine, winter was fine. Yeah. All right. There you go. Um, <laughs> what is something that has surprised you about Atlanta? So you, you both are from different parts mm -hmm. of the world. What's something that really just hopefully pleasantly surprised yeah. you? So I think for me it is the cosmopolitan mix. I think I didn't realize just how much of a transplant city it is. And you talked a little bit, uh, Nicole, earlier about the United. So the United is like this new team here. It's all grassroots culture. Um, you can come from Boston and be a Boston sports fan, hypothetically, and still <laughs> cheer for the United and be excited to be a part of that scene. So there's something about Atlanta where like the culture is contagious. And I think a lot more people than it seems are from different places, and not only different parts of the US, but different parts of the world. And so for me, it was kind of, A, so many people from so many different places, B, somehow rallying again uh, or with this like common excitement and cultural feel. And I'm not quite sure how the city does that, but it does a good job. So. Yeah, I agree. That, that example of Atlanta United just brings mm -hmm. to my mind. Uh, I'd gone to watch a couple of games, uh, and it's really phenomenal how uh, there's, there's such a huge fan following. Mm -hmm. uh, like I've gone to see a game uh, in Barcelona, a soccer game, and it was, I, I won't say, well, Barcelona is Barcelona, but I won't <laughs> say this was anything short of like extraordinary, and it was really pleasantly surprised me, and I think it's a function of what Nicola said, you know, people can, people come in from different parts of the city, and they can root for one uh, new uh, team that they really think is awesome, and that kind of shows, I think, Atlanta United mm -hmm. has by far the best uh, numbers of um, people showing up for games. One of our classmates uh, happened to make it onto their Instagram page as a supporter. <laughs> it's, it's pretty fun. Caleb, what's what's one thing you're gonna miss about Atlanta since you're you're leaving for San Francisco? I think uh, I'm gonna miss how inexpensive it is for <laughs> sure. Uh, I think. Um, uh, the biggest thing I would probably miss is the community. Mm -hmm. uh, it, I don't know how, uh, I just can't tell you how difficult it's going to be 
to again, you know, make a new set of friends and people who support you. Uh, that's kind of part of, you know, what you get at, at business school, I guess. Mm -hmm. That was really nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, so last question, we're running out of time. Um, what is just something in general, not related to Atlanta, but the MBA program, what is something that you're walking away with that um, really either surprised you or you thought was going to be one way and was just a different experience? I actually thought uh, the, s the studies part of it would be super hard, <laughs> but it, <laughs> it wasn't. Uh, well, I guess uh, it's also a function of that, you know, uh, well, we have grade non-disclosure here at Emory, so it's not like everyone's competing for grades. It's not like undergrad back again. Uh, there's much more focus on trying to learn and you know implement those concepts. So I think that has been uh, a kind of unexpected mm -hmm. thing for me. And I think the 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 outcome of that has been a pleasantly uh, you know non-competitive but still a very high learning environment. Right. Yeah. So my I guess mine could be similar in some ways where. Um, and this sounds kind of bad, but part of me, you know, coming into MBA, I was like, okay, like this is something I'm doing. It's something I kind of have to do and like check the box and it'll be good and it'll be fun and, you know, wonderful. And then I'm on to the next thing. I think I grew up a lot more than I expected to. So everyone has their own story and everyone has their own experience. And I certainly like went through a lot more, um, both ups and downs, but like went through just a lot of different experiences this year. I also traveled to Asia twice in one year, which didn't expect to do that necessarily, um, and like went to South America. So again, back to that kind of travel, back to that, I mean, it was one year and you know, so much happened. And I think that was incredible. All right. I would like to add one thing. I think the, <laughs> the community and the friends that we've made here was actually not as, not not even to the close to the level I expected. Mm -hmm. uh, back in December, one of our classmates got married, and like a bunch of us, about 15 of us, traveled all the way to India. There was some Indian students, obviously, but also a lot of domestic students who traveled. And I think uh, those memories are going to be, uh, you know, with hard me to replace. Oh, hard yeah. to replace. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. They're already rem reminiscing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Two weeks left, guys. <laughs> 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 Can you stay for one more year? <laughs> Um, well, that's all the time we have. Thank you very much uh, for the panelists. Thanks for the great questions. I hope we were able to answer everything. Um, if not, I know we had a few questions come in that we can reach out afterwards um, and talk to you about some of those. And hopefully we see you guys here on campus uh, in the coming months. So um, with that, I just will remind you, uh, we will send out an email to you within the next week. It will have a video of this entire web chat. Um, as well as the slides we showed here today. So uh, if you miss anything, you'll have that in your inbox in about a week. So thank you very much, and enjoy your afternoon.